Avid Learning. I'd like to welcome you all to the Many Voices of Faith with award-winning songstress Sonam Karla and the Sufi Gospel Project. This evening will take the form of a lecture performance with both an introduction to Sonam's unique musical project and a live performance that unifies ancient Indian prayer with Gospi soul, so spoken word poetry with Sufi verse and traditional sounds with global beats. Before we begin, a few words about Sonam. Sonam Karla is an artist whose skill spans both Indian and Western music. She has had formal training in Indian classical music under Shubha Mukda and Sarathi Chatterjee. She has also studied various genres of Western music, including gospel, jazz, and opera, under Her Chul Jung and Ashley Clement. This diverse experience has taught her that despite the different roots, musical traditions have more in common than they differ. The realization has brought on the genesis of the Sufi Gospel Project, which Sonam has been working on since early 2011. The project is an effort to blend the voices of faith, revealing that no matter what the language of the lyrics or the ethnicity of the sounds, there is but one language, the language of faith. Thank you. Hey, Gong, God. 
Good evening. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for being here tonight and thank you so much for inviting us to this very special place. Bombay has many, many special, special associations for, for me. My sister lives here, so much of my family lives here. She's here today and so many friends we've made along the way, all the times we've come and we've performed. People who've supported us. This is a labor of love. It was an attempt at taking something that was so sort of set in stone and not trying to change the definition of it, but finding one's own understanding and interpretation of Sufism. Not being brave enough to say I, can, I understand it even, but to find my truth in it. So the Sufi Gospel Project, as the name suggests, is an attempt to take the many voices of faith and to try and create one voice. 
when we debuted the project four years ago, we didn't quite realize how relevant the message gets every day, given India's socio-political climate, given the socio-political climate of the world. I'm so glad that we were introduced to this project through a wonderful opportunity that we got. I was singing, I studied Hindustani classical music, and some might say because I'm a Sikhni or a Sardarni, though you'll know that a Sardarni only becomes a Sardarni if she marries a Sardar and all those other complications. But let's just say, I was a Sardarni and everyone thought, I've been known to break the rules a lot. And so when I was studying classical music, my first concert was at, ever was in jazz, even though I hadn't studied jazz, but I love jazz, so I decided that I would go out there and do it. And through jazz, I found gospel. And then I started singing gospel professionally and everyone said, you're a really strange Sardarni because you sing Christian bhajans, as they called them. And my answer to them was always the same. It was that God has no religion and religion isn't God. So I should be able to call out to him or her in whichever way feels right. And so gospel it was at the time and that's how I started to call out to God and find my faith. Um, I got invited to sing gospel music at the Darga of Sufi Inayat Khan in Nizamuddin. And I thought that was the most incredible opportunity that was being granted to me. A Sikh girl who sings Christian bhajans get in, gets invited to a seemingly Islamic space. And so I felt I needed to do something that was befitting of this opportunity that had been granted to me. Alex Fernandez on the keyboard had been accompanying me on jazz and gospel. And I thought, and it sounds really bizarre, but I swear to you, I was lying in my bed half asleep when I thought of the sarangi. And so perhaps it did come to me in a dream or whatever. It sounds much better for the sake of a story. But it did sort of come to me and I thought, let me just string up a sarangi player. And as it happened, this wonderful gentleman on my right side, Ehsan Bhai, <laughs> he walked into the room, we sat down, we started a jam, and we worked on Abide With Me. And I had tears flowing down my face and smiling. I was smiling at the same time. I couldn't, I couldn't believe how beautiful it felt for me. And that's how the Sufi Gospel Project was really born. We went and we presented it at the Darga of Sufi in Ayat Khan. I hadn't really even thought of the name then. As I stepped out of the Darga, I was waiting to get into my car and the name popped into my head. And I thought, how wonderful if I could blend the many voices of faith together. A year went by. My mother was very sick. She kept saying, will you record these pieces and put them on my iPad? And we went into the studio. We did a couple of pieces, but not with as much thought until after she passed away. My mother used to run a music heritage society called Sharaj, which is the first note of Indian classical music. And they said, would you do a tribute concert to her? And that's when I really started putting these pieces together. We presented as a tribute to my mother. And it was these wonderful musicians my brothers, who said to me that you have to present this to the world. And I said, no, you've got to be joking. I rang up the India Habitat Center, which is like the NCPA of Delhi. I said, may I have your tiniest hall, please? I have an idea I want to share with only about 20 people. They said, no, we're giving you the 500-seater. I said, I really don't want it. They said, no, we believe in you. And we had the most magical time we presented. We had a house full. There were people sitting in the aisles. And I'm sharing this with you. I will explain a little bit more about the project, but it was so special because we were lucky enough to have a wonderful audience response. And after people stopped clapping, there was an old lady in the audience and it was like an orchestrated moment. Everyone went absolutely quiet. And she walked up to the stage and it was like, perhaps my mother was letting me know, but um, she said, my dear child, straight from your lips to God's heart. And I wept on stage because it was just the most beautiful thing. But it was, it was testament to the fact that we were doing something that was different. But people were so kind and people have been so kind to accept this because this is our truth. And so to come back to the Sufi Gospel Project, it is based on truth. Gospel means truth. Sufism means an acceptance of all humanity. It is not a religion. It is a way of life. It is about finding God in the person next to you, in your heart, and in goodness. And that's really the premise of the project. And we decided 
that if Sufism was this acceptance of all humanity, we would take from all humanity and try and blend it together. So we take poetry, prayer and music from different voices, different religions, different genres, whatever, ancient, contemporary, a conversation I might have with a friend, a couplet my mother wrote. John Lennon's Imagine to my mind is the finest Sufi song ever written. He talks of a world without borders, a world with no religion, no possessions. How much more Sufi can you get? So we decided we would look everywhere for this. And so, as I said, we find our resonances everywhere. It's freed us. We look to a world without labels, without you being a man or a woman or a Hindu or a Sikh or a Muslim, you know, it doesn't matter. Each faith, each belief, each truth, no matter where you find it, is just as valid. And so this next resonance we will share with you is something we found in Persian poetry. It has a lovely refrain. We were lucky enough to present this at Jahani Khusro, which Muzaffar Sahab does in Delhi. We also were brave enough to try and do a language that nobody understood for our debut on Coke Studio. We said, let's do something that no one understands. That's sure to make us popular. Um, man manam, naman manam, which basically means I am, yet I am not. Main hoon bhi aur nahi bhi. Tere ishq mein main itna khoya hoon ke main is dunya mein hoon bhi aur nahi bhi. I am so lost in your love that I am in this world and I am not. It refers to God, perhaps, whose presence you can feel even though you cannot see God and man. And in many ways it talks of not being, yet being. So not being bound within a label, yet being. But the last verse was what really spoke to me and we decided we would compose this piece. The poet says, Isai Mariami Manam, Ahmade Hashmi Manam. He says, Mary's Christ am I. And I am of Ali, I am Ahmad of Hashim. And this is what reminds me of a couplet my mother wrote as well. She wrote, and I found this after she had passed away, and it felt like perhaps all my life this is what I was coming to. It's, she wrote, Guru mere saath khade hain, Gobind yahi to hain, Allah bhi maujood hai yaha, to kaun kaha se hai? If my Guru is standing beside me, and Gobind too is by my side, if Allah too is present here, then whose child am I? Man manam, na man manam.
piece I would like to dedicate to you Dr. Gokani because it's from your family it your grandfather right am I great grandfather my bad so you, you'll be I'm not going to try and embarrass you but Gandhiji's great-grandson is here and I had the the fortune the good fortune of hearing him speak and I was so moved and it was a simple speech at his son's wedding so it's not even like he was preaching but I was so moved by his honesty and his truth that I, I remember handing him a CD because I just wanted to share with him this next piece this was Mahatma Gandhi's favorite hymn and it's been sung by the most incredible musicians so we're stepping into some very big shoes here which is why you'll all notice we're barefoot <clears throat> I used to sing this for many many years and then as I was saying to you it's interesting how things get revealed to you and how you find the same thing can be new or have a different interpretation it just depends on how you look at it and so this particular piece I was going through some of Kabir's verses and I found such a beautiful answer to this this hymn which is abide with me a plea to God to always watch over one to be by one side I found almost a missing piece of the puzzle as I call it or a response in the words of Kabir Das the famous Sufi poet so this is our version of abide with me with a little help from Kabir
नकाबे कैलाश में ना मैं जप में जप ना मैं तप में तप में ना मैं व्रत उपवास में ना मैं क्रिया कर्म में रहता ना ही योग सन्यास में ना ही प्राण में ना ही पिंड में ना ब्रह्मांड आकाश में ना मैं भ्रिकुटी भवर गुफा में सब श्वासन की श्वास में खींची होए तुरंत मिल जा इस पल की तलाश में कहे कबीर सुनो भाई साधु मैं तो हूं विश्वास came together and this was not pre-planned a couple of days before we debuted the project I sort of looked around and I realized that each of us belonged to different religions 
And that just felt so fantastic because it was further testament to the music and the message that we were trying to put forth through the music. Aman Ali on, the, on my extreme right. Aman Bhai is a Muslim. Rajesh Prasanna on the flute is a Hindu. Hassan Bhai on the Sarangi is a Muslim. I belong to the Sikh religion. Alex Fernandez, as his name suggests, is a Christian. And Taritpal is a Hindu as well. We occasionally have other people who join our group. We don't always travel with them. We have someone who joins us from Iran. We had an Aboriginal didgeridoo player who wanted to be part of the project. So we keep meeting people along the way and sort of amalgamating the many experiences and beliefs and, and cultural influences from them. So I'm going to tell you a little bit before we start the next song. I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of the instruments. I know most of you have seen them, but for the uninitiated, that is the tabla. The tabla is made of goat skin, which is stretched across. The smaller tabla is made of wood. It's the treble tabla, the higher tone. The one on the left, which is made of metal, it's the bass drum. They're both made of goat skin, and the black circles in the center are syahi, which means ink, and that gives you an even sharper tone. The ropes are used, there are little blocks of wood, so when you push them down, you tighten the rope and you change the note, the key of the tabla. Aman Bhai has a difficult task when he plays with me because I sing from about five or six different keys, so he's, but he's managed to work it out. Um, Aman Bhai can do many wonderful things with his tabla. Why don't you show us what it's like to, when a horse gallops? <laughs> but not the lakri ki kati horse. <laughs> I promise you he's far more talented than just that. <laughs> Rajesh Prasanna, my friend who always delays us when we're traveling um, internationally because his big bag of flutes gets stopped and they keep saying, why are you carrying all these sticks? And we tell them with absolutely, I have an innocent look on my face and I say, my friend, they're weapons of mass destruction. If you've heard him play, you'll know. Rajesh is a phenomenal flute player. He, he's from a family of great flautists. Um, everyone in his family, including his one or two-year-old son, Rishal is two, plays the flute. Uh, they don't hand him a rattle, they hand him the flute. The size of the flute, they're made of bamboo. Um, the size of the flute changes the key of the flute. The smaller the flute, the sharper, the higher the note. The bigger the flute, you'll have a more bass tone. Raja, why don't you show the difference between the two, if you can? Music. That's why his nickname is Raja, which means king. <laughs> On my right is Esan Bhai. Esan Bhai is one of those people who's truly gifted. He, he's gifted at everything he does. He sings beautifully, he plays beautifully, and he's a wonderful person to boot. That's not to say the rest of you aren't wonderful before you decide. Esan <laughs> um, Bhai plays my most favorite instrument. The sarangi for me, it pulls at my heartstrings, and that's what music does, and that's what spirituality, gospel faith, Sufism does. So I couldn't think of a better, better ally to me wanting to do my ibadat, my worship, than this instrument. This particular instrument has come down his family as well. It's 200 years old. It's made of a single block of wood. His son is also 200 years old, by the way. He just got really good face cream. <laughs> um, this instrument is 200 years old. It's got goat skin stretched across it. It's um, got three main strings. The three fat strings are the main strings. 
and the many strings, that, there are about 40 sympathetic strings. I have a joke which I never grow old, I mean I never tire of telling. I keep saying so much sympathy, it must be a woman. And Hassan's answer to that is also pretty well. He says, that's why I keep her in my lap. <laughs> so, um, this instrument, the term, the name Sarangi, the etymology of the name is Sorangi, which means a hundred colors. It is supposed to be able to evoke and emote over a hundred different colors, a hundred different emotions. And if you've heard him play, I'm sure you'll agree with me, it absolutely can. But what was incredible, the more I learned about the instrument, is that you don't play it from the tips of your fingers or from your nail like you would any other string instrument. You play it from the backs of your fingers, the first place that your finger bends, the first digit. You play it from here. And when you learn the sarangi, your fingers will bleed. But you have to play through the pain. And that is life, isn't it? If you can play through the pain and get to the other side, that is ibadat, that is coming out stronger. And as Rumi says, and I say this to him, the wound is the place the light enters you. And I can't think of a more perfect example. Asan Bhai, why don't you show us just a little bit? I know you have been, but it's always lovely to hear you. Young Alex Fernandez on my left, who, as I said, is my oldest musical ally. Alex plays a um, 7,000 year old, very traditional Indian instrument called the keyboard. Um, Tarit Pal plays, I don't know, everything. He's a bit of a table player, as we call him. That's my tabla player, and that's my table player. Um, Tarit carries the stool that he sits on and he plays it. It's called a cajon, uh, it's a Peruvian instrument. He was telling me today, will you please introduce my setup as a hybrid setup? And I said, it sounds like a car. I'm most certainly not introducing it as a hybrid setup. It's of his lot of instruments is the cajon. It's made of wood again. It's hollow and it's got these metallic beads inside it. And the lower you hit it, you get a more bass sound. Higher you hit it, more treble sound. Tarit, the quick. And so these wonderful traditional instruments or instruments that came from different places, we decided that if we were truly going to try and sort of break down walls and try and be seamless about what we were saying, we would ask them, <coughs> bully them, into playing these instruments in ways that they hadn't played them before. So this one, we decided to take a jazz song and we rewrote the words. Every time I'd sing it as a jazz song, I thought it was such a celebration of the fact that God is watching you and that God is in your life that I thought it has, should really be a gospel song. So I took the words and I rewrote it. And again, um, I think a few days before we debuted the project, when I was really doing my last bits of research, making sure everything was correct, I found that Ray Charles had actually taken a gospel song. He'd rewritten it and made it a jazz song. I'd taken his jazz song, rewritten it, and made it a gospel song. So we'd come mystically full circle like you always do in India. And um, this is Hallelujah. I just love him so. Let me tell you about someone I know 
everything's alright That's why no one cares I know Hallelujah, just a little bit so
धा तकिट ता तकिट ता तकिट तकिट धिकिट धा तकिट ता तकिट ता तकिट तकिट धिकिट तक दिम तक तकिट धिकिट अता तकिट तकिट धिकिट तक दिम तक तकिट धिकिट ता तकिट तकिट धिकिट तदिम तकिट तक दिम तक तदिम तकिट तकिट धा तदिम तकिट तक दिम तक तदिम तकिट तकिट धा So the next piece we will present to you, as I said to you, we were able to find resonances of this acceptance of all humanity, of an acceptance of all truths to be valid in many different places. We found this in the words of singer, songwriter, poet, Leonard Cohen. And the reason we chose it and the reason we play both these songs together even is just to put forth a very simple thought that many different hallelujahs, many different calls to God can exist in harmony. Apparently, when Leonard Cohen wrote this song, he was so inspired. He wrote over 80 verses of this song. I was so inspired that I dared to add one to it. But luckily for you, we're not singing all 80 ones, so you'll be able to go to the bathroom when required. <laughs> so this is also hallelujah, with a little twist, which you'll find at the end, which is the Sufi Gospel Project twist.
I heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord, but he. Now it goes like this The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall The major lift The baffled king composing Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her there upon the roof, her beauty and the moonlight over through ya. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
piece for the evening um, and this is based on the poetry of Baba Bulle Shah. Baba Bulle Shah was a Punjabi Sufi poet and for Baba Bulle Shah, a love of God implied a love of all humanity. His poetry spoke of things that we're still fighting for today, basic human rights like equality. One of Baba Bulle Shah's most famous poems which we sing but we didn't have the time to do today but the words are just so beautiful. He says, He says, Chal bulya, chal uthe chalye, 
ਜਿੱਥੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਅੰਨੇ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਸਾਡੀ ਜ਼ਾਤ ਪਛਾਣੇ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮੰਨੇ ਹੀ ਸੈਸ ਟੇਕ ਮੀ ਮਾਈ ਫਰੈਂਡ ਟੂ ਥੈਟ ਪਲੇਸ ਵੇਅਰ एवरीवन ਇਜ਼ ਬਲਾਈਂਡ ਬਲਾਈਂਡ ਸੋ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਨਾਟ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਿਮਿਨੇਟ ਅਮੰਗਸਟ ਅਸ ਔਨ ਦਾ ਬੇਸਿਸ ਆਫ ਕਾਸਟ ਕ੍ਰੀਡ ਜੈਂਡਰ ਔਰ ਰਿਲੀਜੀਅਨ ਟੇਕ ਮੀ ਟੂ ਥੈਟ ਯੂਟੋਪੀਆ ਮਾਈ ਫਰੈਂਡ baba bulle shah's poetry in many ways is what the sufi gospel project is about it's about finding your god as i said not just in rituals and in in walls in buildings but in your heart and if you can find god in everything that you do in goodness most importantly then you have found god and you are free of the shackles of these labels and these rituals and buildings i found a piece yesterday which i'd like to share with you i was reading the poetry of hari vansh rai bachchan and he says he who has burnt all scriptures with his inner fire has broken temples mosques and churches with carefree abandon and has cut the nooses of pandits mullahs and priests only he is welcome in my tavern so many people have said this and that was also what we found with the sufi gospel project that across ideologies across cultures even across time people have been saying wise men and women have been saying the same thing so it just felt absolutely right to try and do this through our music this next piece in this one baba bulesha says he says my teacher has taught me a very valuable lesson he has taught me that my kaaba my qibla my mandir my masjid is not in the four walls of a building but in the walls of my heart and now that i have this knowledge i will wear my anklets i will wear my ankle bells and i will dance i will dance with carefree abandon i will dance because i am free from the shackles of this world and my god is always with me <clears throat> there's an interesting story behind this what are we doing there Is someone trying to turn my volume down? <laughs> It's like the remote control. <laughs> What are we looking at? Oh, you mean the next slide? Oh, I can tell you what it says. I know them all by heart. Um, this one would be the verse that my mother wrote is actually the slide. It says, if my guru is standing beside me and Gobind too is by my side, if Allah too is present here, then who's child of mine so if you can't read it there you go so this one had an interesting story to it when we were creating the song we were collaborating with a rajasthani musician for muzaffar ali sahab's jahan e khusro and um, one of the manganyars the langas and the manganyars if you're fa- familiar with them they're a folk singing tribe of rajasthan and the interesting thing is they go not they're khans so they're muslim but they go to the temple and the mosque they celebrate every every festival and it's part of their culture to go to both places so i kept saying can you sing something rajasthani from your region and he kept singing to me in punjabi and i kept saying no i am punjabi sing me something that is rajasthani something traditional from marwar and he kept singing every piece that he sang to me and ehsan we were together in fact he kept singing in punjabi and i realized after the fourth or fifth time that i was trying to force him to sing something of his that that was his and i was doing what i shouldn't have been doing and i was trying to force that space or that region he said that this is the language i've grown up singing in and again that was testament to what we were trying to say so then we took a punjabi poem written by a punjabi sufi poet from a rajasthani man we composed it we added a little farsi to it and then we decided to add a little bit of irish music to it just to make it simple and so this one is called alfat If you'd like to sing it we'd love it I have some CDs for sale at at the door but if any of you gets the words right the first one to get the words right can have a free CD okay so I'll say it to you really slowly are we up for this anyone okay so it's alfat in bin un bin an bin nukta yaar padhaya re yeah sorry Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm actually very happy to hear that. So, it's Alfat Alfat in bin un bin an bin nukta yaar padhaya re. So, you know, one of the concerts we were at, they really took a long time to figure it out. So, out of frustration, I created a sort of Macarena dance 
So I said Al Fat In Bin Un Bin An Bin. And by the end of it, we had everyone in the audience going Al Fat In Bin Un Bin An Bin. So you know, if you want to do that, you can do that as well. Manish, can we switch everyone on? Thank you. 
Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Nothing 